Konnichiwa, and welcome to Lizard Brains, a Godzilla rewatching podcast. I am your host, Vince. I've seen most, if not... Well, no, I can't even say, because this one I definitely know that I haven't seen. So I've seen most of the Godzilla movies, and I'm here with... Hello, my name is Marcus. Uh, I am watching these in real time as we're going, so my repertoire of Godzilla movies is increasing as this show goes on. Um, I am the noob in this situation. <laughs> So, here we are. We're back. I'm in a new location. This is actually the first Ghoulman Entertainment show that I've recorded uh, with the new backdrop behind me. Um, I don't know if I like it. I might have to move some things around because uh, now I'm seeing it on camera and I don't really – I'm not too keen on it. Um, I might switch a shelf or two around. Uh, I'm in a new location. If you listen to any of the other Ghoulman shows, you might already know that. Um, but, Marcus, how have you been? What's new? What's going on? I've been all right. Uh, I'm in the same location. Um it's cold here. Winter's happening. Um, there's still a quarantine sort of thing happening. Uh, mm-hmm. And I got really into a game called Risk of Rain 2. Nice, nice. Oh, such a good game. Um, but yeah, honestly, not much to report on. Uh, how, how was your move? How's uh, wherever you are? I'm in Colorado. Um I remember telling you I was moving to Colorado, and you're like, I hate being cold. And you know what? It's not super cold here. Uh, surprisingly, it's actually incredibly sunny. Like, I have these blinds. That's that's awful. That's going to look like crap on video. Sorry about that. I was just trying to show how sunny it is. This is like one of the sunniest states, apparently. No that, clue. That makes sense. I mean, it is north of Arizona. Yeah. Uh, I'm 7,000 feet above sea level. Nice. So, so it took a good two weeks to learn how to breathe again. Stands um, to reason. I, I did learn that because of this, my voice will get deeper, which is kind of neat. Um, Sexy. Doesn't it? Doesn't really help anything. It's just kind of a neat fun fact. Uh, it was. I, it was a decent move. It was. I. I. My TV broke. It was like the only thing that broke. I had to go get a new TV. Um, my, I've been streaming. Um, I stream on Twitch. There should be a link somewhere in the description, probably, to the Twitch. I had to get my computer up upgraded a little bit for that. I mean, other than that, it's it's cool, you know. Rock on. Settling in just fine. Yeah. I shop a lot of Costco. The first week I was here, I think I went to Costco five times in seven days. Um, it was one awesome. of the first things we did was go to Costco. I went right to Costco. I said, I just moved here today and I need a membership card. And then I got a bunch of dollar fifty hot dogs and some snacks. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Dude, one of my so. favorite things about the dollar fifty hot dog is the C- like the somebody told the CEO that he needed to rain- raise the price on the buck fifty hot dog. Yeah. Uh, to keep up with the time and he was just like, fuck no. This is yeah. not going to happen. <laughs> I, I did. I did. There's this awesome comic book store nearby, near near me. This independent. It's like not even 10 minutes away. It's a little independent comic book store. I picked up some books lately. But for the show, for Lizard Brains, I picked up this super tight Mothra glass. I think I sent you a picture of it. You did. It's fucking yeah. baller looking. Yeah. And it's it's from Toho. It's officially licensed by Toho. So it's a real a real deal thing. There was a couple other ones there. There was a Mecha Godzilla one. There was a Ghidra one. There was a, actually the first um, Godzilla movie. The one from 54, there was a glass that had the poster on that. I have a the poster right over here on the other side of my room. Um, we were going to put it in our living room. We were going to do our living room as the theme of theater, of, of cinema, and put all of our favorite movie posters up in the in the living room. So, so I haven't got a chance to put it in a, in a frame yet, but I have it. It's there. Um, but I mean, other than decorating that... Decorating takes some time. Yeah. Other than that, other than the pleasantries, my friend, mm-hmm. uh, what did you think about the movie Ibra, Horror of the Deep, which is the seventh Godzilla film? Oh, yeah. We watched a Godzilla movie. Um, mm-hmm. I would say so far, this is now my least favorite. I'm totally with you. Like, I had fun. Mm-hmm. I definitely had fun with this movie. I There were just some things that were oof, not so good. There, it, it, it honestly, I'll be the first person to say this. I enjoyed the movie. I'll, it was fun. Mm-hmm. But a lot of the movie just seemed like there was a human story and it was like 70% done and a monster story that was like 45% done. And they were just like, we could trim the fat and throw them together. Something like that. That's what it felt like to me. It just, to me, it just felt like 
a comedy of errors. Like the yeah. entire movie is predicated on everyone being exceptionally lucky. Yeah. And, <laughs> like, it, I, yeah, it was again, very fun to watch. Just not good. Um, complete, and this movie comes complete with shoehorned fucking anti-nuclear. Oh, we'll we'll get into that. We'll get into that. Yeah. I actually have something written down about that. My, I, I started a new way of taking notes where I would just watch the movie and kind of, excuse me, scribble down something quick. Okay. And just be like, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo, so I can like go back and reference it. Mm -hmm. I don't hate this movie, but it was just kind of like, if I don't see it again, I wouldn't be upset. Yeah, Absolutely. And I guess um, that's the reason why I haven't seen this one. It's probably just because it's so uneventful that, like, when they were showing it on American television, they were like, we can skip this one. I mean, there. Are, once we get into spoiler territory, there are a few things I want to talk about that are, like, series firsts that hmm. were pretty cool to see. Um, but, like, yeah, like, I would say for the sake of watching all of them, this was worth watching. Oh, absolutely. Um, absolutely. I would not call it the greatest hits uh, of Godzilla. Yeah, I get. See, this is the thing is, this is my favorite era of Godzilla from 54 to 89 is the Showa era. And it's my favorite. I think it has the most charm to it. Um, okay. I believe it's like 15 films. OK, but this is like I liked Ibra as a monster, but I just wish we got to see the monster more. Yeah. And this is the first one that didn't have like. An explanation. It's See, just and go on. It's just giant monster suddenly. Yeah, um, and I kind of like that from the perspective of the tribal people. Of like, this is just here. We just deal with this. This is just what it is. But oh shit! Oh shit! Rewind the tape. Rewind the tape. I totally forgot. What? I was going to bring up I was going to bring up how the tribals in this act versus how the tribals in King Kong versus Godzilla is or Godzilla versus Kong but I totally forgot to bring up we got a trailer for the new uh Godzilla versus King Kong movie to come out in like a few months that's fucking true that's awesome I totally forgot about this holy shit okay you didn't watch it right you didn't watch yeah. the trailer no 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 I am okay I'm going to like I've seen the teaser I've seen the fact that God's, that uh, King Kong exists and supposedly there's Godzilla, I assume. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, I'm remain, I'm going to abstain. Uh, one of my special superpowers is my ability to ignore popular culture. Tight. Yeah. Uh, I still haven't heard the hamster dance. Beat that. Um, really? Yeah. That was my shit when I was like seven. It, right? Um, I would, oh God, that took effort anyway. Um, but yeah, I can't wait till the, we eventually watch all the fucking Godzilla's so I can watch that one. It, it <laughs> looks awesome. Yeah. Um, it looks really good. Uh, I was watching it going, I, 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 and I think, even think I tweeted this. I was like, I'm so lucky that I get to live in a time where new Godzilla movies are being made regardless of who's making them, where they're being made. And also, you brought this up before, you've been playing Risk of Rain, a game I've been playing uh, that I think you would absolutely love is the 2018 God of War. Oh my god, yeah. Dude, I, I didn't know I liked Norse mythology until I played this game. Um, I haven't played that one yet, but I'm a huge fan of the God of War series. Really? Yeah, oh hell yeah. N never played a single one of them. Oh. Uh, went to GameStop a couple days after Christmas or the New Year, and it was for ten dollars. And I was like, I will get this for ten dollars, and it's it's probably my second favorite game on the PS4. Nice. Yeah. Um. But that being said, the guy who does the music for God of War does the music for the legendary Godzilla picture. Ooh, that's yeah. exciting. Yeah. Right. So like, like. 
after I heard that, I was playing God of War, and I and it's like these like, oh yeah, like this real fucking like deep bassy vocal Nordic singing, and mm-hmm. I'm listening to it, and I'm like thinking about his name is Bear McCre- McCreary, Bear McCreary's version of Godzilla's theme, and how there's like chants and like these bellowing bassy tones, and just dude. Oh, this mean, trailer looks awesome. There, can I? There's a rumor going around about who some of the bad guys might be in it, and it's really interesting. If I'm not going to spoil it for you because you're trying to stay out of it, but this looks like this looks like I, I hope I hope with the second one, it, it the second the second American Godzilla that isn't Matthew Broderick of the Legendary Pictures one. They do a lot of things in there that are like nice little callbacks to other things, <laughs> nice little references, and isn't just like, haha, you know what this is, reference, haha, bazinga. It's more of just like, oh, hey, here's a thing that makes sense in some capacity because you've seen, like, here's your reward for seeing the other movies. You get, you, we, we acknowledge that and we appreciate it. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, Not and super they, plot relevant, but still fun to see, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, there's like a little thing where they show like a person in one area and they're like, oh, that's my friend. And they're like, oh, shit. Like, without trying to spoil anything. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, I got <laughs> um, you. All of this to be said, we're getting a new Godzilla. I would put the trailer on screen as we're talking about it, but remember what happened fucking last time? Dude. I Again, I take it as a compliment. They're threatened by our uh, charm and personality. Yeah. <laughs> But to- totally going to take money away from that uh, Godzilla. giant conglomerate. Yeah, that, that's yeah. Uh, that's an issue for us. <laughs> but, but 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 comma. Yeah. Sorry, going back to what we were talking about. Um, I was going to say how the tribals just kind of deal with Godzilla or uh, King Kong in King Kong versus Godzilla or Godzilla versus whatever the fucking title is, and how in this one they're just like. That's Ibra. Yep. Big, big, big lobster in our in our back ocean. Like so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Ibra is a giant lobster. My favorite part about Ibra is there is. It's not a big possibility, but there is a slight possibility that that could happen in reality. A big lobster? Oh yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh, lobsters are. For all intents and purposes, immortal. Go on. Um, so, basically, the only way a lobster dies is if it gets eaten, mm-hmm. or if it gets so old that because uh, they molt. If it gets so old that the molting uh, is too thick for the muscle of the lobster to break it, um, so they just like freeze and then eventually starve to death. Um, Holy shit. Yeah. What is but, stopping lizard for, uh, lobsters from being ginormous? Um, those two things I mentioned. And no, but I mean, like, in general, like, like uh, why don't we have giant lo- – like, okay, hold on. That, that it makes me ask an even stupider question. Mm-hmm. Like, why aren't we biochemically engineering lobsters to take care of all the people that don't have food? Um, like, if you could bioengineer a lobster to be six feet long – and you could harvest that food. Like, there's plenty of countries that don't have... Venezuela right now has zero food. They were breaking into the zoo to kill the zoo animals to eat. That's the most metal shit ever. But still, like, if you could bioengineer a lobster to be 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 feet big in a, in a tank. Like, you could feed a village more, multiple times with all that meat. Oh, absolutely. Um, my only... Re- the only reason I can think of that we're not doing that is it sounds expensive. Uh, Probably, but it would fix a lot. Yeah, it turns out there's no profit in solving world hunger. Yeah. That's capitalism, yeah. baby. Yeah. <laughs> baby. Um, <laughs> I've noticed more people doing that. Oh my god, it's one of my favorites. But like, fucking, today is another day that a billionaire... Um, a multi-billionaire has decided not to solve world hunger. Yeah, absolutely. Actively decided. Yeah. So, well, I'll do it tomorrow. Like, fuck you. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's, it's on the to-do list after but laundry. But anyway, is a monster. Yes. So um, lobsters only continue to get bigger as they get older. 
Um, and as I say, eventually they get too big to break through the molt. But there are cases of lobsters being like two to three feet long. Wow. Um, wow. So like not a lot of them, but also the ocean is huge and vast. Yeah. And there's a lot of it we haven't seen yet. So there is a distinct possibility, however slim, that there is a lobster that big. That's fucking nuts. I didn't know this. I really didn't. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's one of my favorite fun facts about this movie. <laughs> cool. Like, yeah. Um, the most realistic thing is the giant fucking lobster. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Cool. Um, so, yeah, let's... Uh... Vince Zella here. Real quick, I just wanted to thank a few people. Uh, we have to thank our Patreon. Our Patreon allows us to do projects like this, allows us to have fun and try new stuff, do new stuff, uh, new shows. We can do side projects. We can try out some new things. A few people that we have to thank. First, from the top, uh, our patron, we have to thank Noah. Thank you, Noah. We also have to thank Gage, but we have to thank him twice. Once for the Patreon and one for the Discord. He uh, supports the Discord so we can do stuff like streaming uh, and we can have game nights and do a bunch of other fun stuff. So thank you, Gage, twice. We have to thank Jordan with a Y. Thank you, Jordan with a Y. And we also have to thank Danny. Also... We must thank Bones Jones and Vigil Beats for our intro music. Links to all of his stuff in the description below. Hello, it is I am ECKA Godzilla. We must also thank Joseph. Awesome. Uh, thanks, everybody. Really, really appreciate you. Now let's get back on into the show. You want me to get into the write-up? Yeah, let's get into the write-up. I actually I, did one because I, I managed my time a little better. Hell yeah. I'm just, I'm eager to get into spoiler territory. Is Eber- all I'm saying. Sorry? I said, I'm eager to get into spoiler territory, is all I'm saying. I got you. Ibra Horror of the Deep, the seventh Godzilla film smack dab in the middle of the Showa era, feels less like a Godzilla movie and more like a regular action drama with a touch of monster here and there. June F... And uh, again, sorry, I'm going to mispronounce all these names. Jun... J-U-N... Fuka... Fukuda... Fukuda... Directed, produced by Tomoyaki Tanaka, Sinichi Sirazawa is writing the film, and surprisingly, it is composed by Masuro Sato. It was not uh, Akira Ikafube. Oh, uh, which I I, I'll get that. into. I'll get into a little bit later. At least on the wiki, I got it mm-hmm. off the the Gojipedia. Uh, it, it he's not associated whatsoever, and I think it shows. Um, But we'll get into that a little bit later. The film was released on December 17th of 1966 and made 300 million yen at the box office, which is a, which is roughly about, in today's money, about $3 million. Uh, somewhat familiar storyline, someone lost at sea. And our old friend Greed shows up to teach some sort of a lesson and a comic relief character with a cool hoodie and a machete. Plus, uh, what is it with Godzilla movies and knowing who the bad guy is based on something obscuring their eyes? Mothra's also here. Watching this film feels more... Watching this film may make you question the monster's motives than anything else that is actually going on in the film. Because I had no fucking idea why Godzilla felt the need to attack in this film. Yeah. That's the write up. If you'd like to talk about the spoilers. Okay, I'm cool. Here. So, what the fuck is this movie literally only happens due to sheer dumb luck of everybody involved. Go on. Um, so the movie starts with two women that you never meet again. Um, did they have speaking roles? Yes, they did. Yeah. Oh, uh, I was wrong. Yep. Uh, it was like, I guess this is the first where the first lines are spoken by a woman. Um, I have to update the notes. A psychic lady who is ser- who is apparently searching the underworld for somebody can't find them, which means that this other woman believes that her that we eventually learn is her son is still alive. Um, and then we meet the other son who is 
talking to a policeman outside the police shop area, getting nowhere because he wants to find his brother, um, with a true dedication of, like, a fucking paladin, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and then he gets nowhere with them, so he's like, I'm going to go to the newspaper. And gets nowhere with them. Yeah. And this is the most important thing of the movie. While he's waiting to talk to the newspaper man, he sees a poster on the wall for a dance marathon. Mm -hmm. And he gets Mm -hmm. a brilliant idea to go to this dance marathon where he learns that the first prize is a yacht. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) Now, a lot of shit happens between then and when that pays off. But it turns out dance marathon is the one of the through lines of this entire movie. <laughs> yeah. And I thought like a dance marathon competition thing like that, like stopped after the sixties, mm. like the beginning of the sixties. Like I think of like Greece when I think of dance marathons and shit. Yeah. But like while, while you're, while you're here in this space of talking about the dance marathon, I'd like to talk about the score of the film. Oh God, um, yes. It fucking sucks. It's bad. It's, real it's not good. Uh, I have written here, background score sounds like a mix between Woody Allen, Looney Tunes, and is very Western, very disco-y, uh, yeah. very early rock, beach rock, and even almost Batman-esque. Like Adam 66 West. Batman. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the movie came out in 66, but still, like, it's very Batman-esque. Actually, uh, saying that it's Western reminds me, my first impression of this movie while watching it Based on the score and how the credits rolled, it felt very much like a spaghetti western. Huh, I can see that. Like, just the opening credits, it didn't really yeah. pan out to anything, unfortunately. Because that yeah. would have been really cool, like a a western, uh, spaghetti western-style Godzilla movie. But I feel like that's something that, that would happen more today. Like, I back then, it would have just kind of happened. Like, like, oh, fuck it, we just got here. Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like if ever there was an era where they try something weird, like putting Godzilla in a spaghetti western style movie, it'd be in the 60s. I don't think they would attempt that now. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm thinking more of like an independent like. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like a different... we, we got we got a two million dollars to fuck with. Let's try to make this this like fan film. Yeah, it, it's uh, crowdfunded. Yeah, fucking my neighbors in it, shit like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like you just like you didn't pay anybody. You went on GoFundMe. You put a thing together. You got like one point eight million. Um, so you bought like a nice camera. But like your fourth grade teacher is in there because like your fourth grade teacher was like, oh, I always do you be you do something fun with film or something like that. Like, like you just put people in it that like you didn't pay them or like everybody got to eat lunch for free that day because they helped and there's a lot of a lot of passion. You ever see Shrek re- retold? No. It's like it's the entirety of Shrek but retold by different pe- like I want to say like sixty different people. Oh wow! So, um, the the best one by far, and this is this is absolutely a bias. Chris Chan actually helps out with it. Um. Okay. They do like a, they do like a fifteen to twenty second thing, like maybe a minute long. But like everybody had like this is your scene, so some of it's live action, some of it's animated, like something like that. Like it just has that like charm to it. Which yeah. this movie, this movie, as much as I'm about to shit on this movie, this movie has a ton of charm. Agreed. And also back to the uh, ton of passion mm-hmm. point, I would like to point out that the original Mad Max. Uh, was filmed on a shoestring budget, and a lot of the actors were paid in cases of beer. No fucking way. No fucking way. I've never seen the original Mad Max. It is a huge departure from what the series eventually became. Yeah. Um, I recommend it. It's a lot of fun. Did you see Fury Road? Oh my god, hell yeah. Did you see, did you ever see the movie Happy Feet? No. No. Happy Feet, I think we, I, Happy Feet is like a sleeper, like top 25 movie for me in like some weird way. And I think oh. half of it is nostalgia. But, um, the dude who directed all the Mad Max movies did Happy Feet. And he had been working on Fury Road since like the first three Mad Maxes had come out. Mm-hmm. And 
he said that because of how successful Happy Feet 1 was, oh, the way Happy Feet 1 is directed is the same way Happy or uh, Mad Max is directed, that, like, the camera is in a certain way that the center of the screen is a focal point or something, mm-hmm. that, like, you could you could put the entire movie in fast forward and you would still understand all the beats through the acting. Yeah. Um, so he's really good at directing your eye to where the action's going to be next. Yeah, but he he had to put a pause on Fury Road because of how poorly Happy Feet 2 did. Oh. But I think it's nuts that you watch this movie that's it's it's dystopian, which is probably why I like it. It's about like if if humans don't fucking fix their act that we're going to uh, kill all the penguins and get, we're going to eat all the fish and shit. Um but it's an animated movie and they dance around and sing Kit at Prince, uh which is fun. All right. Hugh Jackman is an Elvis impersonating penguin. It's a great, like, it sounds like a fever dream, and it's a fucking fantastic film. Um, All right. I mean, I liked Rockadoodle. Fuck yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that dude made Mad Max, and I don't know how we got here. Giant Lizard. Yes, Bam. back to Giant Lizard. Anyway, um, fuck, I totally interrupted you talking about, uh, how this movie has a fuck ton of charm. Oh, yeah. It's got a ton of charm. You said a bunch of people were paid in beer. Um, this movie has, like, even the beginning where where uh, the main character, and again, the only name I know that I can remember from this one is uh, Dio. Me too. Fuck. We picked the same one. So, couldn't help you there. Um, yeah. Dio is the only one I remembered, and I think maybe because it's an easy name and it sounds very Western. It um, sound, I remembered it because it came up in the subtitles and it looked like Deo. Um, yeah. And I'm a huge Harry Belafonte fan, so it just stuck. Sure. <laughs> That's... Yeah. Um, we well, get... there was Yata. But well, I'm not sure of who Yata was, to be completely honest. Because um, I, thought... I don't know if it was the main character or his brother. Yeah, this movie is really bad at... Like, no one introduces themselves. No. Which is fine. I kind of... I, I That always... That always bothered me as a kid that you would watch, like, a new cartoon, and then you'd watch the first episode, but no one's introducing themselves. Like, and I remember being a kid going, why is the first episode of every cartoon not just, hey, it's me, Frank, and this is my pal, and that's the mean bully. Like, why isn't that the first episode of every fucking show? Um, but I guess it's to establish that familiar feeling. I guess, but there there are ways of writing, like, obviously, we've Absolutely. learned that there are ways of writing that in. Um, like, looking at somebody and who does not have your attention yet and addressing them by name to get their attention. Uh, dude, Invasion of Astro Monster did perfectly. Oh. I think so. I think the the one before this, the, the, the one where they go into space and shit. Yeah. I, I uh, Fuji. Dude, I still remember fucking yeah. Fuji. I don't remember the other guy's name, the white guy. Charles, was it? Oh fuck! I do not remember. I don't remember, but I remember Fuji, and that's that's a lot of these movies because I don't yeah. remember fucking people's names. But um, I feel like we're we're doing everything but talking about the movie, and I think that's kind of indicative of how the movie just kind of exists. It really does. Like, okay, um, I'm just gonna go through some beats of this movie that like made no fucking sense. Um, so kid goes to dance thing. The first prize is a yacht. He decides that he needs to win that yacht to find his brother who was lost at sea. Um, he's too late to enter the dance competition, but there are two guys who happen to sit at the table where this kid is standing at. And they're like, we'll show you a yacht. So they go to the pier in the middle of the night. Wait, they weren't friends to begin with? No, they had no idea who this kid was. Oh, really? Yeah. Those two guys. Oh, or, shit, I thought they were friends. No, they were just in a dance competition and, like, danced until they collapsed, sat yeah. down, and they just happened to sit at this table where the kid was staring at the yacht, the model oh, of the yacht that he needed to win. Movie. Yeah, so they go, they break into a yacht that happens to be inhabited by a guy with a gun, um, who you later learn was trying to steal that same yacht. And while oh, he was still in the yacht, I thought he was. I thought he robbed the bank, and that's why he turned the radio off. Yeah, and no. he's like, I don't want to hear about this. I didn't. I thought that was his boat to begin with. No, 
what the fuck? See, this yeah. is this is the problem with like this movie. It doesn't. It tells you everything and nothing at the same time, but yeah, not in a good way. It so just, much mm. happens and nothing happens in this movie. But nothing's ever expanded upon. Like they crash land on the island, and he's like, "Oh fuck, my money." Yeah, and that's why I put like our old friend Greed shows up again. Like it, he's just kind of it just kind of happens, and then it's over. Yeah, the not safe cracker. Like, yeah. the the not thief. But yeah, like, he didn't own that yacht, which brings up a huge point about what the fuck was this guy's plan? Because it turns out that the only, like, okay, so uh, one, like, of the many things that don't make sense, they break into this yacht, a guy pulls a gun on them, um, this yacht is stocked to sail across the Pacific, mm-hmm. um, they break into this yacht, the guy pulls a gun, and he's like, yeah, just sleep here. Yeah, that was weird to me. I was like, what do you, what? why? Right. Why and don't then, you shoot him? And then you find out that the fucking gun's fake, but still, yeah. like. So they all wake up. The kid, like, the gun's missing. It turns out the kid who's trying to find his brother broke the toy gun, first of all, and managed to set sail without waking anybody. And it turns out he is the only one on the boat who knows how to sail. Oh, is that why he be, that's why he became the fucking captain? See, yeah. I was so just kind of going with it. Like I wasn't and like I'm not gonna sit here and be like, well, the monster doesn't show up till this late and the, this happens then. But Ibra shows up at I have it written here, it's in front of me, at 14 minutes and zero and, and one second is the first appearance of Ibra, but it's just yes. the claw. Yeah. You don't actually get to see Ibra until 20 minutes and 47 seconds in, and Godzilla doesn't show up till 31 minutes in and 18 seconds. I'm not gonna sit there, and that's just when they show him sleeping. That's not before. Oh he my gets god, up. yeah. He doesn't get He's, up for another fucking 25 minutes, but yeah, he naps. Yeah, yes. I actually have something written down here about him taking a nap, but um, <laughs> yeah, but like this movie just kind of it, this felt like the most popcorn film. Like this just felt like a movie that you sit down and you're just like, ah, oh, monster going to show up any minute now. <laughs> like it doesn't it didn't feel substantial. And there's a couple scenes I really like when Godzilla wakes up and he like emerges from this cavern him like standing there like the shot is awesome but also like the camera angles in this movie are fucking weird yeah um, like they're they're again 66 batman they're dutch angles they're like on a biantony like something will happen and it's not like how 66 batman they would leave it on that angle for like an extended period of time it's like quick and then it moves which is kind of nice because it gives a little variety but mm. like at the same time it feels so out of place cuz it almost feels like they're using they're not using dutch angles i think dutch angles work best when it's at a low like pointed up like i keep thinking of um i think it's dawn of the dead where the woman's hanging on to the the tombstone, and it's shot real low at a Dutch angle. Uh, it's an old zombie movie. There's a. T- I want to say it's that one. I want to say black and white. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. There's a ton the of low Dutch angles in that movie, and it really, it it really helps. I mean, I haven't seen the whole movie all the way through, but it really helps put that like. You're in shock. You're in terror. You're, 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 you're trying to find some sort of, like, everything's askew. Everything's off. And it yeah. works. But with this one, since when they do it, if I remember correctly, it's normally shot from a higher angle. It just feels like a TV show. And yeah. this isn't a TV show. It's a feature length film. Yeah. Like, I, let's okay, see. Okay. Okay. The, one of the things that I consistently enjoyed about this movie, and I just want to get it out of the way, is the set design. Yes, yes, I'll give you that. I will absolutely give you that. Like, the set design, and actually the miniature work was really good as well. Dude, Um, how good is the miniature work when Ibra destroys that tribal boat? Oh my god. Or, yeah, like, or the the kid getting raised by the balloon. Yeah. Um, Like, they had different positions. They actually had, like, shots of people to scale with the giant monsters that moved. Um, Like, rowing boats and shit. That was awesome. Yeah. Um, but like everything else is kind of weird um, yeah and, like what I just described with the setting sail and stuff that's just the beginning of the movie like I think that's the first 20 minutes or so of like bullshit happening but nothing happening um, and it yeah. continues like that style 
of storytelling continues until the very end. Like, they break into places, they find a nuclear reactor, they pick locks, they somehow discover that the super compound has slaves? Um, yeah, oh, but also those slaves aren't even from that island, which, yeah. is, which I thought was weird. So this takes place on Devil Island. I don't know when fucking Monster Island gets introduced. A Monster Island might be a Heisei thing, but to me, I always thought it was the back end of the Showa era. Um, where, like, all of the monsters that are on Earth live there. Um, okay. Uh, I, I, I don't fucking know. Um, we'll get there. But but uh, this is Devil Island. They took them all from Infant Island. And, like, I didn't – I had no fucking clue Mothra was in this. Really? I had no fucking clue Mothra was in this. I, again, this is one that I have – I don't think I've ever seen. Like, I know of the movie itself, but I don't know if I've ever actually seen this one. Like – I have Bruh. written down in my notes. Let me actually find it. Let me find exactly what I have written down here. Okay. Um, did I not write it down? Womp womp. No. I put my girl is here, the twins. Like, I had no clue. Yeah. I had no fucking clue Mothra was in this movie whatsoever. Surprise, I guess. Like the the actual Japanese title is Gojira, Ibra, and Mosura, and then I don't know the rest of it, but it translates to like roughly like the horror of the deep. Interesting. Wait. In like one of the fifteen titles this movie has. Yeah. Like, I love the Godzilla entrance. Like I said, it's super fucking dope. But like I think what what and I almost messaged you when this happened. And I, it took everything in my power to not do it. How fucking tight was rock volleyball? Oh, my God. Okay. That's How good I was want. rock fucking volleyball? Okay. So that scene is like Ocarina of Time Ganondorf fight. Like this is that scene is the one of the most important scenes of this entire movie because that is when Godzilla discovers that he doesn't have to kick rocks. He can <laughs> throw them, too. <laughs> yeah. Whoa! Holy crap, so, his moveset just expanded. <laughs> so Wait, that just, was fucking awesome. Like, just, just, to, just to bring up, like, um, going back to, like, the quality of these movies. On IMDb, the user rating for the first Godzilla, this is in order of all the movies we've watched, is 7.6. The second movie is a 5.9. 5.9 for Godzilla and King Kong. Mothra, which I think should be much higher, is 6.6. Three-Headed Monster, which should be way higher, is 6.7. Invasion of Astro Monster, again, inv- Astro Monster is way better than the other one. This should be much higher, 6.4. Glenn, his name is Glenn. Fuji and Glenn. Right. Um, And then this one's a 5.5, and the next one's a 5.3. And let me tell you, the next one's not great. Oh. The next one, and I'm not going to ruin anything about it. Like, I'm not trying to fucking put that in your head, and I'm sorry if I just did, because I'm a fucking, I didn't think about that. <laughs> it's ruined. Um, but, like, I remember my mom calling me, and she was like, hey, I couldn't sleep last night, and I was watching this one channel, and they had they had Godzilla on, and, like, she's telling me the plot of this movie, and I went, oh, yeah, no. That <laughs> one's not great. And my mom, my mom's the reason why I like Godzilla. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, like, when she's like, hey, this one's not good, I'm like, no, I believe you. <laughs> all right uh yeah but uh, like i guess tangentially your mom is the reason i'm into godzilla <laughs> it's in some weird way in some weird like uh properties of math and physics or some shit yeah yeah tell her thank you next time i'm here <laughs> I, I will um but yeah like just we we've, we've hit an era of weirdness and i think this is about the time where gamera shows up Maybe, okay speaking of random other monsters yeah what was that giant vulture thing supposed to be Rodan? Dude, I don't know. I have no fucking clue. In my notes, I have written down here, dollar store Rodan. Yeah, just surprise giant vulture. No um, fucking clue. He's just yeah. here. Just, just shows up. What's up, fucker? Like, that, that's... Yeah, just comes to try and peck out fucking Godzilla's eyes and then gets burnt. And um, does he get thrown into the ocean? Yes, gets burnt, and I think he just falls into the ocean. Um, and like, okay, this movie has a weird, like, it weird sense of establishing shots. So, like, we did, we talked about how the safe cracker 
stole this boat and the money. Mm-hmm. And they made it a huge point that in the storm that caused them to crash land um, into Ibera and then into the island, um, they made it a huge point that this briefcase full of money fell onto the floor of the boat after the chess set fell um, and then all the money fell out and then they made it a point that the guy, ha- the guy had to discover half of the briefcase and all of his money was gone. Yeah. But they decided to like not establish that there's a fucking another whole monster in this movie and then like does Ibra eat the giant vulture if it falls in the ocean? Like Well that's the thing about how I said, I don't know where the fuck Monster Island is. Is Devil Island become like the remnants? Because they blow up Devil Island at the end of it. Is there remnants of it that later becomes Monster Island? Right. Also, I have a huge fucking problem with that particular scene. With what? The, the, okay. From how shit's supposed to work, I have two issues. First of all, okay, so the way they wake up Godzilla is they're on this island. They have, they have a machete. Mm-hmm. Luckily, the um, the female protagonist, who is weird, um, what? happened to find. What I'll do you mean, weird? Um, okay, so when they find her, yeah, she, um, she just escaped from the slavers, um, and she's like, for whatever reason, the guys who stole who stole her as a slave never took her dagger, um, and then our intrepid heroes stumble into her in the middle of the woods and uh, she starts running from them. And, like, she books it through the fucking jungle. No fucking problem. And then she comes to a clearing and falls over. And, like... Yeah. She's alternately incredibly competent and then incredibly incompetent, (laughs) as the plot demands. She suffers from woman in a movie from the 60s dilemma. Absolutely. Syndrome. And it's like, obnoxious. She, she's there to push plot. Yeah. And like, I guess they got tired of relying on luck. So now we're just going to rely on this woman. Okay. Um, can we talk about her running into an open clearing when Godzilla's there? Oh I have, I have written down two things quick. One, yeah, yeah. Godzilla rock fetish. Cause he's just like, he's blowing up that base and he's fucking Godzilla, but he's throwing rocks. Step on some shit. Use your fucking tail. Fire breath. Yeah, but then, where is it? I have old man Godzilla falls. As, he just sits down like an old man in a rocking chair and goes to bed. Yeah, just on his tail. He, on his tail. He's like, good night, everybody. And she's like, we can go. And then fucking, this yeah. movie does everything and nothing at the same time. Like, there's, they're, they're, like, if you sat down, I bet if, and this is not to say that the people who wrote or directed this movie were incompetent, because I'm not saying that they are. Uh, Tomino- Tom- Tomoyaki Tanuka is still involved in some capacity, and he's been in, he's been here since '54. Um, it's a new director. I don't remember that director's name ever. It's a new composer, and I'll be honest, I don't like the music in this. It sounds a little too of its time, where you can listen to bum 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 True. bum bum at any point in history, and you'll be like, we're about to get fucked up by a big lizard. This is like just fucking bongo rock. Like I'm just yeah. like I'm on the beach. Hey, and also beach party. misplaced, like. Again, the through line of this movie is the dance is the dance competition, right? Yeah. The dance marathon. At one point after Godzilla takes this nap, um oh yeah, sorry, forgot to mention the bad guys are an army called the Red Bamboo, yeah. um, who have unlimited funding and a nuclear reactor, but still need slaves to make a thing <laughs> like to make a so- uh, thing made out of lemons that keeps Was it lemons? That's what they, that's the prop that they used. I don't know what actually it was supposed to be. Yeah, I, I was fucking confused too. I was like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah, so yeah. much happens, none of it's explained anyway. And, and then, and then fucking brown hoodie macheteman is just like, hey, what if we made a fake batch? And in fucking all the years of slavery, nobody thought of that once. Fucking right. And also time makes no fucking sense. So, like, okay. Oh, three days have passed. What do you mean fucking three days? No one yeah. ate in three days? You're trying to summon lightning. Yeah. I don't okay. know how often it rains in Japan, but you're trying to summon lightning in fucking three days? Like, fucking right. chant to Thor or something if you want lightning. And, like, okay, yeah, that's one of the things that really 
there are so many moments in this movie where they're like, now we just have to wait for lightning to happen. Or now we just have to wait for Godzilla to fall asleep. And then yeah. it happens. Um, so, okay. <laughs> when they wake up Godzilla, they take that guy's machete, tie the wire around it. The wire that... Uh, Was uh, it a necklace? Yeah, the necklace that this woman just liked and stole. Um, she just picks it up, puts it around her neck, and they're like, hey, we need to use your wire to wake up Godzilla. So they... Tie, they put the machete in the top of the mountain that they have, like, top of the cave that they happen to be in as a lightning rod, tie the wire to it, and then drop the wire down to Godzilla. The wire is not thick enough to make any lightning happen. But it works anyway. What do you mean? What do you mean the wire? The wire that they use to go from the machete lightning rod. The machete rod, to Godzilla, yeah. Yeah, it's a tiny, tiny wire. And so, It like, wouldn't travel? Well, lightning... Electricity travels through the uh, root of least resistance, right? Mm-hmm. When it's very lazy. The, yes. <laughs> when metal heats up, the resistance increases. Um, so mm. something that tiny will heat up super fast and be no longer the path of least resistance. Huh. I knew you were going to have a problem with that copper. I was watching this. I was like, Marcus isn't going to like this. I just know he's not going to like this. I just did not like that at all. And also, yeah, I knew it. <laughs> yeah, it was like, it made me very mad. Um, but I was like, fuck it. Everything else relies on luck. Let's just pretend the thunder woke him up. You know what? Speaking of luck, the, the one thing that I'm happy that didn't rely on luck is the twins are here and I'm very happy to see them. I'm always mm -hmm. happy to see Mothra. Um, yeah. But I'm, I was super duper happy when... She's like, hey, tell the people to make a net. Why a net? They'll know when the time comes. It was like the only time that like you need a gun in the third act, show it in the first. Like it was the only time where something was brought up and then the payoff happened from it. It wasn't just we got away from the sleep. But yeah. I, I, have, I have a question for you. Yes. What beef does Godzilla have with Ibra? What fucking problem does he have? I do not know what his problem is. What beef does he have with Mothra? Yeah, exactly. What fucking beef does he have with anybody in this movie? Yeah. He he gets woken up and they're like, we're going to die. Let's use Godzilla to help us. So they wake Godzilla up and then he's just like, I'm up. Fuck I'm you up. Who, needs fu who needs to be fucked up? Because I'm up. And I'm yeah. up. But I know what I'm here for. Fucking, you know what I'm here for. Bring it on. Hey, giant lobster. Fuck you. Like, <laughs> it, it would have been, it would have been like more established, or maybe established is the wrong word, but it would have made more sense if they would have established that Godzilla is like a really heavy sleeper and he has insomnia and like he's up. So now he's just pissed off. Like, yeah, every he, movie, there feels like there is something that is going on that says, like, hey, Godzilla's upset because of X and Y and maybe even Z, if it gets fucking wild enough, is going to happen because of it. But it just doesn't feel. Like there was a payoff in any capacity for he just wakes up and starts fucking up Ibra. And then like, I got to say, I have written down here and I knew this was going to get taken out of context. Godzilla gets the good meat. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, he, he rips off Ibra's uh, claws. And I was like, you know, this big lizard's fucking eating that shit. But right. uh, but like he fucks him up and then Mothra's like, I'm here for my people. OK, bye now. Mm -hmm. And like Godzilla's like, what you doing, bitch? What to do, bitch? Like, there wasn't even like, uh, there wasn't even like, oh, God, Godzilla. Like, even if they would have been like, Godzilla must still be angry because of what happened four movies ago or some shit. Like, right. Like, recently I was listening to something and this guy said that he, he was talking about um, the new Pixar movie Soul, which if you haven't seen, seen it, I think is fantastic. It looks um, great. It, it's really good. It's really fucking good. I actually saw something that said. The reason why, if you if you watch Toy Story one, the first Pixar movie that wasn't a short, they didn't animate Andy a dad because it would have taken more resources. And when Andy has a birthday party, all of the kids are just Andy in different shirts mm. because it was easier for them to render that. There's a scene where the main character walks through Manhattan and there's just hundreds of people, and like it's if animation wise, it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, but the the guy was saying his gripes with. Soul, and then he said how Soul tries to establish these rules and then forgets these rules. But in Ratatouille, when the when the mouse, when Remy the mouse is like controlling the guy with his hair, and the guy goes, "How do you? How did you do that?" The mouse just kind of shrugs his shoulders and goes, "I don't know," and just keeps doing it. Like 
you establish that the rules don't have to make sense right there. Like, yeah. establish Godzilla needs to be pissed off in some capacity. Say that Godzilla, like, is he just pissed because you woke him up? Right. Is he pissed like, because the coffee maker's broken? Like, is he pissed because his fucking, he's late on the alimony? Like, what happened? Well, Why is Godzilla I, upset? Why does Godzilla feel the need to go fight a giant lobster and a big moth? Like, I think, why did, the, Mothra, Mothra fucking helps him half the time. Why is he attacking right? Mothra? I think the thing that makes that more aggravating in this, in this movie in particular is like in all the other movies, he's just on site fucking shit up. In this one, I mean, first of all, he spends the first 45 minutes asleep. Um, second of all, he takes a nap twice. Just, just, yeah, yeah. The first one gets interrupted. He's like, I want to bed. Yeah. Like, let yeah. me fucking sleep. Yeah. So, like, I've worked clearly, in the morning. <laughs> you know, if, if Godzilla just rampaged and, like, that's what he does when he's awake, um, like, it doesn't matter why. Like, that's just what he does, you but know? But previous movies have established, like, there's that one scene where they're like, maybe Godzilla will help us. And they go, and they're like, Mothra, they tell the twins, tell Mothra that we need Godzilla to help. And Godzilla's like, fuck you, I'm not helping you people fucking attack me. Yeah. Fair. Like, that made sense. It made sense. Like. Yeah. I, okay. We are asking a lot for this movie to make sense. A, a lot. No, like, but I but I am and I'm not because it's it's like I say this I say this and it's gonna sound shitty, but it it is and isn't hard to make a Godzilla movie because it depends on what kind of movie you're going for. Do you want do you want a movie where Godzilla rampages? You know me, I always say I like the destruction scenes. The destruction yeah. scenes to me are masterfully built. They're, they're, they're put together well. When you see Godzilla's foot crash through a, a department store in Tokyo, it looks amazing. That's what I like, right? Yeah. But you should never shy away from the human element because the human element of the story draws you in. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, with, the, with the most recent Godzilla movie, the second legendary movie, a lot of people said that they focused too much on the human element. And I don't I, – I thought it was perfect. Not perfect, but I thought it was a nice blend of monster versus um, human because in the mm-hmm. first Godzilla movie, there's not a ton of monster stuff. It focuses way more on the, on, on the human stuff, which whatever. If that's what you like, that's what you like. And every writer is different. Every director is different. I get that. Mm-hmm. But like – for Godzilla to just wake up, like nobody just like literally meme aside, nobody wakes up and literally chooses violence. Like he woke up and was like, I guess I have to do this now. Like it, it didn't feel it, it almost felt like he didn't want to be there. Yeah. Well, OK, I, I can ex- excuse that just for the sake of like he got woken up by lightning. Kind of. So, yeah, like, OK, but he gets woken up by lightning and then they try to kill him with lightning later. Yeah, okay. So they, why did yeah. it, if, if that's what made him angry, why didn't that make him fucking super rage? Why did that make him turbo rage? Why didn't he blow up the island? Like, why did the, the island have to be blown up by the scientists? Why didn't Godzilla say, okay, you want to do this fucking twice in the same day? Now everybody's dead. Yeah. Now everybody's sh- dying. Like, make that more apparent. Show a scene where Godzilla gets electrocuted and he's freaking out. And then he's just like, ha, 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 and just fucking atomic breathing everything. Like, I don't... Yeah, you could like, have added six more shots to this movie, and it would have made more sense. Agreed. Okay, you could have added six more shots and taken away, like, half the shots of the button, the detonate button. Yeah. Like, <sighs> the super important detonate button that no one can get to. Also, bear in mind, okay, back to time not making sense. Mm-hmm. They had to wait three days for the lightning. The lightning. And then they had, then, like, shit happens, Godzilla's on the loose, they're like, let's detonate the island, because another thing I have an issue with. (laughs) So, again, this army with unlimited resources that decided to have a weapons plant Mm -hmm. on this island, and as far as I can tell, the only thing that this island produces is a powder that prevents Ibra from attacking. Um, whatever. Uh, and they have a secret underground huge facility with a nuclear reactor in it, a, an atomic reactor, excuse me. Yeah. Um, and like they have installed a self-destruct bu- system that will destroy the entire island 
and they somehow missed the cave with the huge fuck off lizard in it. Like, oh, like they didn't know that Godzilla was there. Yeah. Like, how did they miss that? What Godzilla is this? Is this the Godzilla from the past movie? Is this a different iteration of Godzilla? Is this Godzilla just been sleeping there for thousands and thousands of years? And only did the nuclear blast wake all of them up. But he's still asleep for some reason. Like. Yeah. <sighs> also, well, fucking while we're bringing up in con- things that were um, that didn't make sense. I'm, mm. Oh, God. I wish it would have been shown that, like, in the beginning that the main character liked dancing in some capacity for him to even think about going to a dance-off. Like, he's like, fuck it, I'll do it. Like, you don't, like, I, I, I'm all for an underdog story, but you're that much of an underdog that you're going to fail because I don't know if you've ever danced before. Like, it's not like he was talking to the priestess or the mother and was like... Well, you know how we, you know how me and we, me and my brother used to dance all the time? Maybe we can go, oh, but Sun Son, you haven't danced in, in such a long time, not since the accident. Yeah. And it's like, you know what I mean? Like, like establish something. Like, even if it's just, just a small little two extra lines of dialogue to say, hey, I like dancing. I'm going to go to the dance off because dance offs fucking offer boats. Yeah, right. And we need a boat to find my brother. And also this guy, this kid, his plan was to get a boat somehow, go into the Pacific Ocean yeah. to find one dude uh-huh. who died in a, who supposedly died in a shipwreck. Everybody died but him. Somehow. Um, oh, it turns out that the brother is on Infant Island. Just hanging out. With Marvel's um, people. Yeah. just Not fucking... like it's been established that Japan knows of Infant Island. Right. Like, they wouldn't think to search there. Also, like, this movie has weird ideas of colonialism happening, like, with the slave trade of whatever, and, like, I'm still uncomfortable with the brown Japanese people in this movie. I don't think this one was that bad. I I, I thought of you when they showed up. Yeah, it's not as bad as it has been, uh, fucking King Kong. Um, (laughs) But I think they're supposed to be Pacific Islanders. Like, Maori and such. Really? I think. I just thought they were tan Japanese people, to be honest. I didn't... Maybe. This, this one, this one. They didn't look that bad. And I yeah. knew you were going to bring this up. I don't... I'm not Japanese. I don't know any people IRL that are Japanese. Um, I just thought that, like, they were tan. Yeah, that's... I don't I mean, know... I don't know how much melanin your average Japanese person has in their system. Um, but I just assumed that they were tan. I, that's also totally a possibility. Um, which made sense if they're, if they're tribals, they're outside all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. But, um, however, comma, it like, it just feels, it, it makes me slightly uncomfortable because I don't like the idea of, uh, uh, Pacific Islanders being portrayed as like savages all the fucking time yeah Um, yeah which actually okay uh, so of the many things they luck into they luck into the machete the aforementioned machete okay but but speaking of machetes that made sense because if it's a bunch of tribals on an island it makes sense that you would just find a machete i mean If somebody died right there, I'll give you that. What didn't make sense is how everybody has a fucking iron knife. Yeah, like it's shiny fucking steel. And on top of that, they pick up the machete and their first reaction is screaming cannibals. Yeah. Yeah. This... Look, we don't have a lot of time left. Right. Sorry. There's but too much in this movie that does not make sense. I just want to bring up how there is no talk of anything nuclear. Nuclear. Nuke. Say it for me, please. Nuclear. Nuclear. Um, nothing nuclear whatsoever. Thank mm-hmm. you for that. Okay. Um, 
for the entire movie, they find the atom reactor, whatever the fuck they were calling it. They're like, oh, no, don't go in there. And then they leave. And then the movie's over. And they're like, I hope never to be using nuclear weapons ever again. Mm, yes, only yeah. in times yeah. of desperate measuration or not at all. Oh, no, Godzilla's on the island. They're going to blow it up. I feel bad for the big lizard. Jumps in the water. Explosions. Movie's over. Yeah. And they're flying away into the sunset on in the in the net that Mothra told them to make. Or sorry, the twins I told them. Yeah, they just did it. Like that's okay. So the self destruct thing happens, and like, and they have a two hour countdown. And in that, in the first hour and a half, most of the native, most of the slaves who have been rioting for the past three days, mind you, have decided to like they're just going to use this time to build the net, and suddenly it's there. Meanwhile, mm-hmm. for that hour and a half. Mr. Not a, not a safe cracker, like not a criminal, yeah. is trying to turn it off. Like he just has his arm in some rubble trying to turn it off for mm-hmm. an hour and a half. Yeah. Like you can't reach it, motherfuckers. Stop. Like, <laughs> right. Do something more productive. I appreciate your stick to itiveness. However, comma, do something more productive. Um, okay. We, we, need to, we need to start wrapping up. So here's just my question to you. Real quick. Okay. Real quick. Okay. The. Other thing I had an issue with was the atomic blast. First of all, they were mm. not a safe distance away. The humans were not a safe distance away. No. They'd be Those fucking... Those thyroids would have been filled. Yeah, they're done. Second of all, when an explosion happens, like a nuclear explosion or regular explosion, being in the water with that explosion is the worst place to be. Absolutely. Because air can compress. Water does not. So... All of that force is going to kill you. Yeah. So Godzilla is like he dove into the water to avoid the nuclear blast would have been obliterated. Then like mm, my issue with physics in this movie. Anyway, yeah, let's start wrapping it up. What's what your are your question? final thoughts? What? Are you, let's just wrap it up. What's your final thoughts? What are you thinking before we get to a grade? Mm. I enjoyed this movie for the history of it for the the things that are unique to this movie. Um, like, legitimately, I laughed out loud when Godzilla picked up a rock and threw it with his hands instead of kicking it. Like... Yeah. Fucking It's fucking iconic. rock fetish. <laughs> um, however, if you never see this movie... You're you, fine. You're totally fine. Like, like not, even... Even the next one you could see for the camp value of it, like, it's just kind of funny. Mm. Like, it doesn't really, like, why is this happening? But if, like, you kind of, you hit a certain point where you're just like, okay, this is dumb and I know it's dumb and we just kind of have to live with that. And that's okay. Mm. Not every movie has to be Les Mis. But, like, I don't know, dude. It's just, like, this one is just kind of, it's kind of hard to defend. This is oh one that, God. like, if, if I never saw it again, I'd be okay. I'd like to see more shit about Ebra, to be honest. I want to know if there's other giant Ebra that are out there. I think an Ebra movie would be tight. I thought the scenes where Godzilla's fighting underwater was cool. But, Agreed. like, a lot of it was just like, okay, just let's keep it going. And yeah. you know what? I had to make a phone call more than halfway through the movie, and it made the movie feel longer because I had to pause it. Oh, um, so probably I'm trying to, like, not, like, have that in my mind. Mm. Um, but yeah what would you rate this film I would rate this film mm, I'm gonna go I'm gonna say six kiddie pools cut in half as set dressing out of ten okay I'm gonna give this movie 5.7 dance marathons out of ten oh my god we never discussed that payoff real fucking quick what payoff so they established Dance Marathon. Yeah. Turns out for the entire time that they're on this island, over on Infant Island, the natives are having are praying, and that includes a full musical number with dance. I didn't even fucking think of that, to be honest with you. I just yeah. thought I just thought, here is what tribal people do when they're praying and celebrating and worshiping something. I didn't nope. think of it 
And any point of like, look how we're not so different, man and, and I don't want to say beast because that's fucked up, but like man and underdeveloped civilization, we are the same, just we do not have technology, atom bomb can reduce us back to here. I wasn't trying to do a racist Japanese voice, I was just trying to do like a up its own ass voice. Yeah. Like, f- I, I didn't, I did not think that deeply into this movie. It, this it, was, uh, it only occurred to me, one. yeah, right, it only occurred to me like for the third or fourth time they cut back to them dancing that they've been dancing for a week and i was like oh my god the dance marathon it this is the through line okay hold on how come why we're talking about why we're talking about the tribals there and this is what we're gonna end on yes why do you never see his brother until he lands on the island that would have added such a level of suspense if he's looking for his brother i know the brother's there he doesn't like oh my god and, like, why is his brother just randomly shirtless in jeans? Whatever. Yeah. Fucking this movie, again, not missing anything if you don't see it. Yeah. However, if you do see it, you're not going to be wholly disappointed. But it's it has like its great. moments. That's the thing is, like, it's it's almost it's almost like, all right. Oh, shit. OK, we're back here. Oh, oh he's falling asleep. Where's this go? Okay, okay, all right. Like Vulture it's just out of nowhere. What's that? Vulture out of nowhere. Yeah, just here's fucking knock off Rodan. Yep. So Same. the next movie that we're going to be watching, if you'd like to be playing along at home, hopefully now that I'm kind of settled in a little bit, not totally, but a little bit, we can kind of get back to the every other week kind of schedule. The next movie we're going to be watching is called Son of Godzilla from 1967. Oh God. Okay. Yeah. This is oh, the one God. that my mom called me about. I used oh. to actually have a figure of the son of Godzilla. Um, Who fucked Godzilla? Yeah. Yeah, dude. That's, Who? Like, not even Godzilla watching it yet. Canonically is male. Canonically king of the monsters. I'm saying he's canonically male. Okay. Somebody's okay. So Godzilla's out here slinging dick, homie. I don't know. Fucking but landing. I think but I'm going to probably talk about it when we record this episode, but I'm pretty sure this is the era and I could be wrong because maybe it's more of Hedera, the Hedera era. No, I think it's this era. Hmm. No, it's 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 this movie. I'm pretty sure where Gamera came out and Gamera was uh, doing very, very well with children. And they were like, we need kids hmm. to be into Godzilla. OK. Yep. OK. Got you. So, so that it's, is uh, the next movie we will be watching is Son of Godzilla uh, from 67. Burger King got, uh, and McDonald's uh, type situation. What? Burger King and McDonald's type what situation. Do you, what, do you, I don't, what are you talking about? Uh, every time they're in direct competition with each other. Every time one of them comes out with something oh, new, oh, the oh. other one comes out with something new. I or see I what you're saying. Or I guess it would be Pixar and DreamWorks type situation. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Where can they find you, Marcus? They can find me on the Discord. Uh, sure. That is the best place to get in touch with me. I will. You can talk to me directly if you really feel like it. Um, and that's about it these days. Still no Try. socials? Still no socials. Uh, yeah. Just uh, trying to keep it low-key. Where can they find you? If you'd like to find me, there should be a link in the description to my Twitter, to uh, the Atomic Radio Hour Twitter. This has been a Ghoulman Entertainment production. Um, there should have been a little video about the uh, Patreon. Thank you for the Patreon, uh, for everyone who, who donates money so we can continue to do shows like this. Thank you to Vigil Beats for doing our intro beat. Um, I did try to update our Redbubble, so there was Lizard Brain stuff on Redbubble. There should be a link in the description below. But they said that it was copyright infringement, which I don't see how, because I wasn't using iconography of Godzilla. You know what I mean? Like I was within – I think I was within fair use. We're in the, the process of going through and trying to get it back up. But I think mm-hmm. – which I thought was going to get hit first, the lizard head, the big lizard head logo yeah. is still on there. Um, if you want to throw us a couple bucks through Patreon or through Redbubble, it's highly appreciated. Yes. Um, and also you get cool shit out of it. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we'll have another episode of Atomic Tabletop if you like Fallout and you like D&D. Hopefully that will be out soon. Um, it's a ton hopefully. of fun. 
Uh, but there is, there's, there's, thank you. I, 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 I've, it's been a while since I've done an outro for the show. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you for sticking around. Uh, thank um, you for having me. And yeah, man, uh, I'm looking forward to get back to watching some giant lizard movies. I've missed it. Yeah. I, we, we launched the show at kind of a weird time. Yeah. Uh, it took forever to come out. And then by the time it came out, I was like, I'm getting ready to move. And <laughs> It was just a lot at once. So hopefully now we'll be back on a, on a, on a somewhat bi-weekly schedule. Mm. Um, other than that, be safe. Thank you for being here, Marcus. Thank you for having me, Vince. Uh, be fun, have safe. Uh, we love you. Very much. If you're going to fight giant monsters, make sure you have a motive. All right, bye. Bye. A Ghoulman Energy. Entertainment Production.